Hello everybody, welcome to another blog workshop from the fabulous blog factory. I'm Nikita Fuchs for Eternity and I hope today you brought your heavy machinery with you because today we will write our first Hello World contract and Sophia knows it's of course not what we're gonna do because blockchain is all about tokens, right? So you and me will both together write your first token smart contract for the Eternity blockchain today and while doing so you will learn a thing or two about Sophia, the cool smart contract language on the Eternity blockchain. So let's jump right in. First you open up your favorite contract editor under studio.apps.com apps with AE. Open a new tab and delete example code. Writing a new smart contract you first need to give it a name starting with a capital letter. And if you made it this far, you'll succeed with the rest. Just keep on watching. Like all programs, the smart contract has a state he is in. Because security comes first in Sophia, it doesn't allow you to scatter your state variables across your code like you know from other languages, but kindly asks you instead to put it in an object, the correct type name which we'll use from here on is record, called state. Because Sophia is a cool and clean language, it uses indentations instead of brackets. And its developers are big fans of Haskell. But no need to be afraid, just keep in mind to indent your code blocks more than the line that you started your function or expression in. <laughs> wow, that was a lot of talking. But back to our token contract, what's the least thing it should have? Let's go with the name, the total token supply, and of course, the balances. Now as we define the variables of a contract, you'll get to learn three basic types of SOFIA. The total supply of the token is an integer and its name is a string. The balances however are stored in a map. Maps assign some input value of some type to an output value of some type. Okay, okay, okay. But how do I initialize these state variables? <laughs> Using the init function. Public functions are called entry points in Sophia, by the way, to clearly indicate that this code technically poses an entry point into your contract, so beware. The init is a special case though. It executes only on deployment of the contract and can never be run again. First we pass it the parameters we need to initialize our token contract. The other specialty about the init function is that it's not only used to initialize your contract, it's expected to do so for everything in your contract state. You do that by returning a record containing data for everything in your state. No worries if none of that makes sense to you yet. Just give it a go like this. Name and total supply should be self-explanatory. But remember, we need to assign every state variable in our state some data. So for balances, this is how you assign a new map with one key value entry. You could add more entries separated by a comma if you like to. Call.caller is a keyword that always references the wallet address of the caller of a function. In this case, it's the sender of the transaction, which is us, we, who we will deploy the contract. A side note for the techies, under the hood, the init function is expected to return a value of the record type state, but as that's always the case in init, it can be omitted in the return type definition. So here we go, our init function returns the initial state. But where's the return statement? Being a cool and concise language, Sophia needs none. Your last expression is automatically the return statement. Let's go ahead and take a look at that for something as simple as a function for getting your contract's name. Go for an entry point named name with a return data type string and get the name from the state just like this. And that's it. And because that was not so hard, come on, was it? <laughs> Let's do another important getter function for a bit of practice. 
before we give our first token contract its first run on the Eternity blockchain. Go for another function called balance. Because we want to know how many tokens we and our friends own, right? <laughs> give it an account parameter of type address and set return data type to integer. Because that's what the function will do, right? Take an address as input and return us some number representing the token balance this address has. To look up the token balance assigned to that address in the balances mapping, we could technically go like that. But that wouldn't take the case into account that the address we are trying to look up maybe doesn't exist in the map, meaning this user never owned a token before. Sophia offers us a quick shortcut to provide a default value that should be returned in case the key we are trying to look up, in this case our address, does not have a value in the map yet, like this. So if we ever check a balance of an address that never owned a token before, we get a zero in return. All right, all right, all right. I see you're dripping sweat from all the coding. <laughs> Take this towel champ. Now it's time to do a first test run and deploy a token contract to the Eternity blockchain for the first time. On the right side, you see that your contract was successfully compiled and a studio is asking you for the values to pass to your contract's init function upon deployment to the Eternity blockchain. If not, just jump back a few seconds and check your code real quick. Don't feel demotivated from making mistakes. After decades of work, Microsoft is still failing to build a decent operating system after all. We enter our init parameters and click the deploy button. A Studio will sign and send your contract to be included in the blockchain for you. Should the transaction fail for some reason, try logging in with GitHub at the top right sidebar to get your personal testnet accounts as shown in the last video. Congratulations! Your first test run was deployed. Let's check our getter functions. Here we can read our token name from the smart contract and copy pasting our account's address. We can check the token balance we just gave ourselves a minute ago. But don't pop the bottles just yet. We are still missing an essential functionality for your token, right? How is anyone supposed to pay as Lambo with it if it can't be transferred yet, right? Last but not least, define a transfer function, as it will write data and therefore change the state variables of a contract, we need to tag it a stateful entry point. Of course it takes at least two parameters, the recipient's address and the amount. Being careful engineers, we of course first check whether the sender has enough funds to transfer the desired token amount and make sure the transfer amount is not a negative number. Introducing herefore Sophia's built-in require function. It requires its first parameter to be some true condition or else the transaction executing the smart contract will fail, revert all changes done so far and return the second parameter as a reason to you. So first we make sure the token amount is not a negative number. Next, we utilize our balance getter function to make sure the sender owns more or at least the same amount of token he tries to actually transfer. Assuming the sanity checks pass, we update the sender's and recipient's balance accordingly. In our state, we set the balance of the sender to his old balance minus the tokens he just transferred. But wait! To put intended state changes into effect, you need to perform them in Sophia's built-in put function, like this. Wait, what freaking put function? Why the hell do I need that to update my state variables and why does everything have to be in the state thing at all? You can have your simple helper variables in the function scope. But allowing contract scope variables to be defined all over your code, like say in between functions, can lead to a dangerous mess with catastrophic consequences for your contract. And trust me, I've seen some shit.
by forcing you to use the put function, you explicitly state your intent to change something about the overall state of the smart contract and never, for example, accidentally assume that you'd be just changing some local variable while actually messing up your contract. To wrap up our token contract, the last thing remaining is to add the transfer tokens to the recipient's balance. Here we don't forget about the case that the recipient might not have been a token holder yet, using the same trick as above. Now deploy a contract. And send along some. And that was it for today. I hope you learned a lot. Actually, we went through 2% of what the Sophia contract language is actually capable of. But hey, you wrote your first token. You learned how to initialize a contract, how to write stateful and non-stateful functions and tons of other stuff. And I hope you had lots of fun. Uh, if you are interested in more technical content regarding the Eternity blockchain, of course, hit like, subscribe, ring the bell, feed your cat, clean your room, your usual YouTube stuff. Uh, we would love to see your questions uh, in the forum. Uh, please come visit us. Links are all down below, uh, as well as a working code example for the case that you have been struggling maybe a bit. And um, yeah, happy building.